Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mimi Murphy from WTVO Channel 17, and I'd like to welcome you all tonight to Stairway to Heroin. We're so pleased that so many of you could join us for this very important community event. You know, you just have to watch the TV news or read the headlines to realize that we have a heroin epidemic here in our community. With 230 deaths attributed to overdose in the past three years, it stands to reason in a county our size that many of you may know someone who died as a result of heroin use. So many of these fatalities have been teenagers and young adults. This is an evening for us to come together as a community to address the issue head on by looking at the realities of the situation. You'll hear information from various perspectives that will highlight the extent of the problem. Some of these statistics are stunning and the stories are difficult to hear, but they're important and they're truthful. Our goal is to increase the community's understanding of the scope and nature of the problem and to open a dialogue about how we as a community can prevent more lives from being lost. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize Rose Krantz as our presenting sponsor, along with major support from WTVO 17, the Rockford Fire Department, Your Choice, El Kermes, the 17th Judicial Circuit Court of the State of Illinois, and the Winnebago County Coroner's Office. In addition, thanks to the contributions of the exhibitors who greeted you on the way in, the resources they offer are part of the solution. Prior to this event, many agencies have been working separately to try and bring attention to this issue. As of tonight, these organizations and others who have vested interest in the health and well-being of our community have banded together to say, that's enough. It's time to do something, and the time is now. I'd like to introduce our first speaker this evening, Rockford Fire Chief Derek Bergston. Chief Bergston is only the 10th person in the city's history to hold the job. He joined the department 21 years ago, and prior to his appointment as chief in 2008, he served as a company officer, as well as in the roles of lieutenant and captain. He holds degrees from Rock Valley College, Western Illinois University, and Northern Illinois University, from which he has a master's in public administration. He has many specialized fire cert certifications and has the distinction of being the first member of the Rockford Fire Department to be accepted into the National Fire Academy's Executive Fire Officer Program. He's here tonight to tell us about his department's experience in dealing with the heroin epidemic. Please welcome Chief Bergston. Thank you very much, Mimi, and thank you to Rosecrans for allowing uh, me to come speak tonight about the impacts of heroin in our community. Not only the entire community, but the emergency responders that respond every day. I'd like to just take a minute um, just to point out we have one of our crews here, the men and women that protect the citizens of Rockford in the back. We have Engine Company 11, which responds to this area. I just want to thank them. The men and women of the Rockford Fire Department are the ones out on line every day that are doing God's work and stopping the bleeding, starting the breathing of uh, medical emergencies and doing the rescues along with the Rockford Police Department to keep the community safe. So to them, I'm very grateful. Um, just want to kind of give a, an overview of the impacts of heroin on the Rockford Fire Department and how we respond and maybe kind of dispel some myths that some people have about heroin users and uh, just kind of point out how widespread this is and the impacts of it. And uh, first, also, I also want to mention that my mother's here tonight to watch me for the first time. So I'm, I'm a little nervous, but I'm going to hopefully pull through it. So. All right, so I already gave the, over, the introduction. We're going to go a little over our statistics. And one thing that I'm going to point out is our hotspot map, just to show you where in the city um, that these calls for service are coming in for heroin overdoses. And then the demographics of the individuals that are being impacted by utilizing this drug. And then the impacts of the department and the community from the use of this. Uh, Mimi already gave my introduction. Um, one thing I found out when we, when we go through and do some of these presentations, it uh, really resonates home if we can actually tie a human voice to it of what we're talking about. Um, I have two 911 calls that we're going to have. One thing at the fire department, I'm also responsible for the 911 center. 
Uh, that's one segment of our emergency response that you don't ever see an individual on 911 that's not glamorous answering the phone, giving that information, but our men and women there answer roughly 900 911 calls a day in the city of Rockford. They work 12-hour 12, 12 shifts, they're all emergency medically trained, and they do a phenomenal job responding to the citizens, protecting our firefighters and police officers. Um, so the first one, I'm going to give you a short audio of a 911 call for a heroin overdose. 911, where is the emergency? Um, I just came to my friend's house and I, I don't, I think he's overdosed on drugs or something. What's the address? Uh, I can step out here to see the address. Um, the address is 1436 4th Avenue. 1436 4th Avenue? Yes. Okay, and how old is he? Uh, he's 42, fresh! Fresh! Do you know what he took? Okay, now if that didn't give you goosebumps, I don't know what does. Uh, that was an actual call. We cut it off there, but at that point, our dispatcher had already sent uh, the ambulance and the fire engine to that scene. Um, what we do, we have a we have a requirement in 30 seconds, so we want to get those units dispatched because when someone's not breathing, uh, they're not having blood circulation, they're going to end up with tissue loss in their brain, which could end up in permanent injury. Um, the dispatcher went on to give them CPR until the crews arrived so we could administer the medicine that we needed to to reverse the effects of heroin. I have one more call for you. Rockford 911, where's your emergency? Yeah, I need uh, Narcan uh, on... What's the address? 1146... Uh, apartment 22. 1146 what street? Um, 8th and Broadway. You need to it's pick one. 1146 what street? 8th Street and Broadway. Okay. Are you on Broadway or are you on... Okay, so this is another call. This individual knew that he was taking heroin and said we need Narcan, which is a drug that's going to reverse the effect. So these, these calls I just picked in the last two days. It's not like I had to go searching for them um, for the amount of calls that we go on. And one thing, if anybody's in this room, both calls, they had difficulty giving their address. We can't send our units to you know where you're at. Um, and I will give one plug for a 911 center. Roughly now, 70% of all of our 911 calls are cellular. So we cannot tell where you're at for an exact address. Um, roughly half of our 911 calls that come in, people do not know the exact address that we're at. So if you're ever at a friend's house or you're somewhere else, please know the address if you have to call 911 because that's the first thing we ask now. We ask where is your emergency so then we can get help in responding to you. This is heroin overdoses by year. Um, as you can see, it started in 2010 when we started recording the data. Um, it's been steadily, we had a spike in 2012 and 13 was 2007. Um, and then 180, then we're at 60 year to date. Uh, so compared to 2014, we, were, we are up. And these numbers are survivors. These are not the individuals that we respond to that we're not able to revive. So these are only individuals that were able to reverse the effects of heroin. Um, in 13 and 14 and 15, we're having difficulties with the heroin drug, what they're actually cutting with. A lot of it, they're adding fentanyl, which our, our Narcan doesn't have the best effects on that. It takes more of the Narcan to reverse those effects and it's having more of the mortality with individuals that are using it because of what the, the individuals are cutting that drug with to get more product out of what they have. Okay, here's the hot spot map. This is the, the city of Rockford only. Um, the red is the higher concentration, the green. So if you look on the map, you can see um, that this is from north to south, east to west. Uh, there's big areas throughout the entire city of where this is being impacted. Um, it's not just a downtown or lower socioeconomic class or what some people have categorized, some homeless people or some typical drug user. This is, this is all walks of life individuals that are uh, battling this disease of being addicted to heroin. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we take this very seriously in everything we do. We really preach fire prevention and we're definitely working on EMS prevention because our number one goal is that someone doesn't have to go to the hospital, doesn't have to succumb to this. Um, and it's not just the individual that's impacted. We see when we arrive on scene, it's the entire family, their support group that's definitely impacted. And I'm sure you'll hear about that from later from some of the speakers, but um, the ripple effects of this drug is widespread, not just the, the actual person battling the addiction. Uh, patient demographics in the city of Rockford, our average age is 36 years old. Uh, the gender is 60% male and the race is 74% white. 
That was just some basic demographics. Like I said, this is just from the city of Rockford only. Impacts to our department. This increases out of service times for other calls that we need to go on, whether it's cardiac, uh, respiratory issues, or fires. Um, increases our response time that those units are tied up. Like the one 911 call, you said that they knew that the individual took care and they were asking for the drug of choice to reverse the effects Narcan by name. Um, so these individuals that are battling with this are quite familiar and uh, we pick them up frequently. Um, one thing that we're really trying to work on as an organization is more outreach and education efforts. Um, and I think Rosecrans is doing a terrific job here really making this poignant. Um, there aren't many individuals throughout the community that know of this widespread issue of, and the impacts of it. And it, it is having tre tremendous impacts on our community, um, not just for the fire department, but the police department. Um, so it's definitely something that we need to address as a community as a whole and something we're going to need to focus our efforts on. And you have a lot of great speakers that are coming up also that are going to speak more about that. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Rosecrans for allowing me to come here to speak. And, I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and gets a lot out of the speakers coming up, and thank you very much. Yeah.